You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo. And boy, oh boy, does this one make me nervous. I don't know what's going to happen in this episode, guys. Uh, the last episode, Brian tried to kill us. And, uh, because he's got some really weird death fetish. And there was something else in the cave with us. And, uh, I think Brian's going to get it. But I don't know how this links to... I don't know how this links to Chase. Uh, that's the that's the question. But anyway, guys, let's jump right into it, shall we? All right, guys, sit back and enjoy another spooky video. <clears throat> All right. I gasp and scramble out of the grave, gagging uncontrollably. Once I'm out, I curl up on my side, drawing in my knees again. The horrible screeching and bizarre babbling language continue, though the sounds from Brian are more ragged now. Occasionally, the room flashes with light as Brian shifts around, but I face the wall, not wanting to look. Get up. I curl up tighter, just waiting, hoping that I wake up. You sniveling little shit. Get up! I press my face into the dirt. Trust me, there's far worse out there, and it's coming for you unless you get up and get out. I've given up. No, I haven't. You force yourself up onto your hands and knees and start crawling in the direction of the exit. Oh, whoa, whoa, third person? Okay. The flashlight continues to be rolled around, giving you glimpses of where you're going. The sounds from Brian have stopped. Now it's just the mechanical gibberish that seems to be growing in pitch and speed. Mechanical? But you don't look back. You don't need to see that. The otter is already broken enough. Soon you're crawling through the exit, and the cacophony behind you is immediately muted. It becomes more and more faint until it almost disappears as you come out the other side. Once you're free, you stand up in the comparatively fresh, cool air. The main tunnel. You remember this place. You also know the tunnels like the back of your hand. It's pitch black, but if you feel along the walls, you should be able to find your way out. You, heard to the, you head to the right, down toward the end of the main tunnel with your right hand dragging along the wall. Then, when you feel an opening with your hand on the take to the left, when you take a left, then another right, and finally, a final right that takes you out the back exit. Nick had drilled the directions into your head far too many times for you to... Red eyes appear at the end of the tunnel. At the end of the last stretch, you freeze and observe. Things in the mines can hurt you far worse than things outside. Brian had just experienced that. But you're not sure. Is this one of the otter's demons, or... No. No, it's something else. Something you're not quite seeing correctly. A friend. The lizard. He's... warped. Chase! I slump to my knees, shaking uncontrollably as Flynn shines a light down on me. Fuck! Chase, come on, let's go! Flynn yanks me to my feet, and the next thing I know, I'm stumbling after him. Out of the mine, and out of what I'm now completely convinced is hell. I sit in the passenger seat of Flynn's truck, feeling numb. I choose to stare out the window, watching the desert rush by as Flynn tries to ask me questions. Where's the bear? I shake my head. Is he still in the mine? I think so. What happened? I don't know. It feels strange being back out here. While everything is definitely fucked up and strange out here in Echo, at least it makes some sense. The mine is completely different. It's... Chaos. That's the word. Chaos. What? How did you find me? I look back at Flynn and see that he's staring at me closely, barely keeping an eye on the road. I went to Leo's house, found all you guys there, except you, of course. Just waiting? I don't know how to feel about the idea of all my friends just sitting around while a serial killer had kidnapped me. Of course, none of us really knew Brian was a serial killer. Well, a lot was going on. Kudzu, that raccoon, is the one that told me you were missing. Leo, on the other hand, said you were fine, that he saw you around the house. What? Oh, shit, that's not good. Leo's losing his damn mind! Alright. Okay. Flynn shrugs. I have no fucking clue. 
but he was practically holding everyone hostage. Wouldn't give the keys up, so I had to take my own truck out here. Is everyone okay? Hopefully. Jenna said she'd try and keep him calm while I came and looked for you. How did you know I was in the mine? Well, Kudzu pointed out the direction you went. I drove up to the canyon since that's basically the only place he could go. I saw where he'd parked and knew he'd taken you in there. But how did you know about that back entrance? Flynn smirks as we come out of this curvy, as we come out of the curvy Echo Canyon and onto a straight road to Echo. Does it really matter? Either way, I know a lot about the town. That's a little secret there. I watch Flynn for a while until he finally glances back at me. What? Where the hell have you been in the past few days? Hmm? Oh, in the town hall, managing stuff. Stuff? Like, everything going on. I tried to find you guys at the hotel, at Carl's house, but I didn't see anyone. Assumed you tried to leave. That answer is far from satisfactory, but I have no energy to dig deeper. So are we going back? Yep. Then what? Well, they were saying something about a train, so I assume we try to get out that way. Sounds like you already found out you can't drive out. Yeah. We turn onto the road to Leo's house, and as I watch the house draw close, I can't help the growing sense of dread in the pit of my stomach. The hell. As soon as we step through the doorway, I'm engulfed in a combination of beige, gray, black, and white furs. I'm surrounded by my friends. Oh, Lord. Jenna, Carl, and Kudzu are all talking at once, asking me how I am, what happened, if I'm okay. Flynn puts up his hands. Guys, guys, let him breathe. I don't think he's up for talking too much. Jenna and Carl step back, but Kudzu doesn't. He's got a hand on my shoulder, gripping it like he doesn't think I'm real. Hey, I'm... I'm sorry, I should have been more careful. I should have let you piss on my fucking carpet instead or something. It takes me a second to realize what he's talking about. The thing that got me into Brian's trap in the first place. It makes me laugh a bit at how earnest Kudzu looks compared to what just came out of his mouth. I also realize that I want to hug him really, really badly. So I do. I feel the raccoon stiffen up for a moment, then hug back. It feels so fucking good to be in the arms of someone I trust, and it seems to break through the numbness that I'm feeling, at least a little bit. Carl seems to take that as an invitation to hug as well, and Jenna joins in. I don't mind, and I wish I could stay like this forever. Actually, I just wish this all hadn't happened in the first place. It comes to an end eventually, and Kudzu is the last to draw back. I'm about to ask where TJ is when I see Leo. The wolf stands at the entrance of the hallway, his eyes on me and Kudzu. He's got a pillow on one paw and his shirt is hitched up over his stomach a bit, like he just pulled it on. What are you doing? The room goes quiet and the mood immediately changes. Carl, Jenna, and Kudzu all look weary. No one says anything. I clear my throat. I'm back. Brian took me to... Leo frowns. Back? No, you were in my room and asked for a pillow. We were... Leo's glare turns on Kudzu. Have they been telling you to say this? Leo, no! The look in my former boyfriend's eyes is completely alien to me. I've never seen that look from him before. I guess I knew that the town, or whatever all this is, had gotten to him, but not completely taken him. Let me save it right here, guys. Oh, Lord. Now I'm not so sure... Kudzu stands next to me, his shoulder in front of mine. Leo eyes him again before turning back to me. Chase, come here. I don't move. The room is completely silent. Chase, I said come here. Leo, what the hell? Leo ignores Flynn, his steely eyes on mine. The feeling of coming to a safe place is completely gone now. Echo has seeped into every part of my life, it seems. But I don't move. And neither does Kudzu. Leo doesn't seem to know what to do. His face transforms from anger to confusion. Chula, you were just in the bedroom with me, telling me... Leo trails off. I was in the mine, Leo, with Brian! Leo stares. The silence drags on until a soft clicking comes from the kitchen. Everyone looks as TJ emerges, staring at us all with sad, lost eyes. TJ, what is it? There's, a uh, there's another train coming. Oh, good! Thank you for watching, TJ! 
I'm not sure if Jenna is relieved because our ride out is coming, or if it's because it can distract us from the whole Leo situation. We all move at once, squeezing past Leo out to the backyard. He watches me pass him, dumbfounded. TJ's right. In the distance, I can see the lights on the train, slowly winding its way toward us. At this point, dawn is just breaking. Somehow, it's only been one night, even though it feels like it's been several weeks. Alright, for whatever reason, that train is moving pretty fucking slow. We should just be able to hop on it. The train wails in the distance again, much closer now. I thought I was going to have to drive alongside it with you all in the truck bed, honestly. The train does seem to be moving pretty slow, but as it gets closer, I realize that it's not that it's not exactly going to be a jog to run alongside it. I might be able to catch it at, full, at a full sprint. Alright, here's what we're going to do. I'll get on first along with Kudzu, and we're going to pull the rest of you on, alright? Carl fidgets nervously. Uh, I don't know if I can run that fast. You will, now. I feel a paw land on my shoulder and turn me around. It's Leo. Hey. Hey, what is it? I look back at Flynn, wanting to hear what he's saying. Listen to me. Everything you said at the house, did... did you mean it? Huh? What did I say? Leo looks impatient. What you said about loving me, wanting to be with me forever, you meant that, right? What? The train is approaching. We have maybe a minute. What the fuck? Why are you acting like you don't fucking remember? Leo bristles, teeth bared, eyes narrowing. Oh my god, Leo, let's get out of here first! I start to back away toward the others as they continue to discuss jumping on the train. No. Leo grabs my shoulder, looking me right in the eye. He makes an effort to calm down, closing his eyes a moment before opening them. Then tell me now, are you going to stay with me when this is all over? We can talk about this when we get on the train. No. I want to know before. I see Kudzu looking at us, and it looks like he's about to head over. Just tell the truth. That's all I want. Ah! I should have saved! Okay, um... Okay, so this route, I am going with Leo. This is Leo's route, so I'm going to try and work it out with him. Despite the voice in my head telling me to run, run far away and never look back, I will work things out with him for this playthrough. Okay. Okay, let me save right here. I promise, when we get on that train, we'll figure everything out, okay? Leo watches me carefully, looking unsure. Kudzu is next to me at that moment, though, and he pulls me back toward the group. Come on, we're going now. Leo's eyes flash as he watches, his teeth showing. I don't have time to try and console him anymore because the train starts pulling up. Run! Flynn shoves Carl forward, and the ram takes off alongside the rails, looking over his shoulder at the train. The next thing I know, we're all running after, we're all running after Carl as the train catches up. I look back. Flynn waves both arms at the, at the locomotive as it whizzes past. As it whizzes past, but if there's a reaction from the driver, I don't see it. I have just enough time to read the letters on the side of the engine, Prescott Railway, before it's moving past me down the tracks. I realize then that the train is quite short, maybe only five cars in all. We won't have many chances. Kudzu! Flynn points at the, at the caboose and starts running beside it, next to two little steps that drop down at the very end from a platform. Gracefully, the lizard jumps, landing his feet on the steps as his hands scramble for some kind of purchase. He finds it and pulls himself in, and the next second he reaches out, holding onto a handle in the caboose as he grabs one of Kudzu's paws. With much more ease than Flynn had, Kudzu jumps onto the steps and pulls himself onto the platform. I pass Carl at this point, the ram already losing steam. He calls after me in a hoarse, ragged voice. Shit, I'm not gonna make... Flynn grabs the ram as they pass, and Carl's hop skips onto the uneven gravel, and for a horrifying moment, I think he's gonna fall. But Kudzu leans in and snatches him up as well, practically lifting Carl onto the platform. Jenna, who's right beside me, is next, reaching out a paw to Flynn. He grabs it, and Jenna easily jumps on, over the two steps. I think it's my turn next, but TJ slows down, 
abruptly, and I move to the side to make room for him. Flynn grabs his arm, and TJ hesitates several times before Kudzu gets a grip on him as well, and he's able to step up onto the first step. It's then that I realize that the train is picking up speed, and I'm starting to slow down. I move up beside the caboose, seeing Flynn's outstretched hand. Now that I'm next to it, I can see how terrifying this is. The wheels clack loudly in my ears, and I have no idea how I'm going to lift one leg up while keeping up the speed. But I get a grasp on Flynn's hand, and I see Kudzu's paw reaching out as well. The train's going way too fast now, and I know I only have one chance at this. I pull down on their hands and lift my feet up to land on the last step. Once my feet make contact, relief floods through me. I can't help myself as I grin and take my first step up. Then I hear the sound of stomping footsteps behind me. I look back and see Leo running, running right next to me, snarling with every breath. I start to move quickly, wanting to be out of the way for Leo's turn. But that's when I see him already reaching out for me. His anchor, his anchor bracelet glints in the moonlight. I don't have time to think as the wolf grabs the back of my shirt and pulls hard. I hear the threads pop in my collar as I'm choked. I lose my grip on Flynn and Kudzu. As I fall, I reach out and grab onto a railing on the platform. In doing so, my legs swing under the train, and I lose my grip. I hit the ground hard and roll several times before something catches my legs. I'm pulled violently with the train, and an unbelievable pressure squeezes me, like my calves are caught in a vice. Suddenly, the train lets me go, and I come to an abrupt sliding stop in the gravel. I lay there, stunned, feeling nothing. Oh. And then, an almighty throb goes through my legs. I gasp and pull, push myself up. And see my feet missing. I stare as my legs seem to end where the ends of my pants do. A dark, dark stain pulls out on the ground around them. I can't think. I don't know what to think. Chase! I look up and see Kudzu, just Kudzu, limping toward me. I wonder if he's missing a foot too, but no, just limping on it. As he approaches, I point at my missing feet, like, maybe he'll have the answer to what just happened. Fuck! Immediately, the raccoon drops down beside me, reaching for his waist. He's undoing his belt, and I'm about to tell him now. If not, now's not the time for that kind of stuff. Then he starts putting the belt around one of my calves. That's when he lifts the pant leg, and I get a glimpse of ragged flesh and fur, blood, and the white of bone. Leo, you fucking dumbass! Give me your other belt! I hear footsteps behind me. Take it up! Oh. Kudzu slumps down over my legs, and I wonder if he's trying to stop the bleeding with his body. A similar dark puddle starts to form around his head and face. Shit! I reach out and press a paw to his head, wishing I wore a belt so I could... I could put it around his neck? Oh no, no, no! Leo mumbles in my ear, pushing Kudzu off roughly as he looks at my legs. We're gonna get you fixed! I didn't mean for this to happen, but we'll figure something out! The wolf slides his arms around me and picks me up, and the world tilts. Leo flashes me a grin from across the table, as my mom turns away to get drinks from the fridge. This is going way better than I thought it would. My dad asks Leo what he's doing for a living, and the wolf tells him he's already got a high-paying job at the auto repair shop. At the same time, he's playing footsies with me under the table. My legs are throbbing regularly now, not even really hurting. I squint against the bright light of the bathroom as Leo flips it on. He turns to the bathtub, and I see a bright streak of red on the wall after he does. Then he lays me down in the tub and starts to wrap stuff around my legs. It does start to hurt. It does start to hurt then, and I groan. Shh, don't worry, it's fine. This is going to fix you up completely. The end of the bathtub is completely red. I lay my head on Leo's chest as he taps away texts on his phone. I love days like this, where we have the whole afternoon free and we choose to do nothing. It's peaceful and quiet. 
I love the way the late afternoon sun pours through the window and warms my fur while at the same time being cooled by the fan. I realize then that I want to spend the rest of my life with this wolf. Leo nuzzles my neck and head fur, mumbling into my ear, but I can't really understand him. I look down and see that my pants are off and I'm just in my boxers. The ends of my legs are wrapped in red bandages, completely soaked through, soaking into the bed I'm laying in. I start to reach toward them, but my hand is shaking so hard, and Leo grabs it and pulls it back to my chest. I'm really cold. In response, Leo draws closer and spoons me. Early morning light is pouring through the window, and I think I can hear sirens. Leo nuzzles my ear again, and I try to pull away, but he holds me tight. saving right here in case I can go back. I want to do that other path. My god. Oh man, I need a break. That was so fucking intense. Oh god, I'm almost shaking. Jesus. All right, guys. Um This is probably not a good ending. Uh so Chase lost his feet. And Leo killed Kudzu. Yeah. I suppose there aren't many happy endings in Echo. Hmm. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, sorry to lighten this mood. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!